Welcome back to Gotcha Covered Sports, your one-stop shop for gambling, fantasy, and sports talk. Starring Danny B and Matt McCarthy. Three, two, and one. Hey, guys. Hey, Dan. Hey, Matty. How are you, pal? I'm good. I'm good. I'm just glad that we have some room to spread out today. <laughs> Lots of room today, pal. Our fantasy guy's not here. Yeah, our fantasy guy is Playing chasing. softball. But we have Nate with us today, Matt. We do. We have numbers of Nate Rawlings on the monitor there, Dan. Is he via Skype today? He's via Skype. But Dan, uh, Monmouth, New Jersey, right here in our backyard. We can bet. <laughs> I was waiting for that Murphy fella to sign that bill. I thought he was going to hold out, to be, uh, to be honest with you. I thought he was going to pull a little, let me see if I can get a job for my cousin first. Maybe a little no-show job here at Golden Nugget. Or whatever, you know, that's how those po politicians work. Are as you, you know. saying that things happen in politics, Dan, and especially in the good state of New Jersey? The Absolutely, state? especially in New Jersey, the armpit of the world, Matty. You know, that Hudson County, especially the armpit of the world. Hudson County politics, third most politically in uh, Third most politically corrupt county politically in the United, in the United States. States. Well, then that goes well with Allentown being the third most uh, allergies in the United States. So I lived in the third most corrupt place at one time, and now I live in the third most allergetic place. Is that a word? Okay. Nate, I, you know what? Nate we, is there a spell check on that, Nate? We can make words these <laughs> days. We can make words. So, Nate, can you hear us? Are you there? I can hear you. Look at, the he Look at that madman. Look at that madman. Nate, uh, you've got a lot of stuff, a lot of splaining to do to us, Nate, but we're going we're gonna to hang you off camera. Well, hold on there, Baba Louie. You've got a lot of splaining around here. <laughs> Uh, but we'll kick your ass off camera, Nate. Um, thankfully for me, I don't have much ass to kick. So, oh, we'll still kick know, it. Don't worry. Uh, about he it. was coding. Look at his eyeballs. He yeah. was up all night coding. I can yeah. tell those eyeballs. Yeah. Those are coding eyes. Coding. 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 Most people have benders, drinking benders, drug benders. He has coding benders. Big difference, though. All right, Dan. Uh huh. Let's get back to Mammoth. Let's do it. All right. What does this mean, Dan? What does it mean? Millions and millions of dollars, Matty. That's what it means. Millions and millions of dollars for the state, accessibility. I, I, you can't bet online right away, but I think in 30 days, as long as you're in the state, the IP address matches. You can just bet on your laptop, smartphone, iPad, et cetera, Matty. So I can just go, from, I can go through the Lincoln Tunnel or the Holland Tunnel into New Jersey, mm -hmm. stand there, then, well, I don't know. I don't know the particulars, so don't quote me on that. I will send the crew down there to start betting some football futures, and here's one right now: the Cardinals to win more than five and a half games. The Arizona Cardinals will be my first bet placed at Mammoth Park. I'm sending a crew of guys down there since I can't make it myself, so that will be my official first bet for football over five and a half wins. Arizona Cardinals. So the Cardinals are without Carson Palmer. They got that. They got that injury guy, that Bradford guy, and Sam Bradford. Yeah, and they got a decent backup, and they got that kid from UCLA. That Rosen. You know, Rosen. He should be good. You know, I don't think he'll start. I don't think we'll see him till like week ten, week twelve. Depends on Bradford. He's the one that said that he's gonna. He was picked as the seventh pick or something, or he said well, he was supposed make to go teams. one Sorry. or two. I think in the beginning yeah. he was supposed to go one or two, and. There was some skeptics about him, you know, but let's see what happens. It doesn't matter what, well, as far as pay it does, yeah. but until you actually get on that field and perform, I don't like Bradford. Look at him. He's a bum, yeah. right? I, I don't like him. He's, he's damaged goods, too. So yeah. that guy's but he's, he's got injuries. his money, and that's all that matters, Matt. All right. Okay. So um, you're sending a group down there. When couple, are you going to make an appearance down there? When I get a chance. I'm looking forward to... Uh, Going down to Atlantic City. It's a little bit closer, more convenient for me. The Bogota, I believe, is next. Uh, and then the old Revel. It's now going to be Ocean's Casino, the one that was in bankruptcy. Have you ever been there? Beautiful place. I have. I have. I, it's been a long time. Well, they were only open for a couple of years, and they hit bankruptcy twice. I don't get it, uh, but it's a beautiful resort, and I look forward to going down there. I think we're going to go down there like the 26th or the 27th of June. But in this realm, you are royalty, so they should be rolling out the red carpet, specifically in Monmouth, New Jersey. I'd be happy if they cleaned the carpet here. Ho! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Zing. laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> you see now it's getting me. I'm yeah. choking on my own words. But anyway. All right, so on gotchacoveredsports.com, Dan, we do fantasy, we do sports talk, but we do gambling. And this is your, your wheelhouse because we got, we got Monmouth up and running, New Jersey, Delaware. <laughs> Excuse me. They're talking about it in New York State. Joe Torrey making a play. Missouri, Mississippi. Uh, if you look at Twitter, I recommend any fan jump on Twitter and follow Daniel Wallach and David Purdom. 
up to the minute info on all the states participating. Then California is set for 2020. 2020. They're not going to jump in right away, but they should, they should be by 2020. A little wait and see on the part of California? Let's see what happens out there. They're rolling in money with the marijuana right now. Yeah, they're doing okay. A lot of states are doing Colorado's kicking ass with that, too. And it's cash. Pennsylvania as well. They started up uh, right by my house. There's a dispensary. So, let me ask you this question because I don't know this. And, and we got you covered. It doesn't matter what you want to talk about. Right, you can cover me on this. Um, what? How does this? How is it implicated in taxes? What's that? I go down to Monmouth next right. weekend. I play some some bets. That what you size bet? What size bet are we talking? First uh, of all, I'm going to go with anything uh, less than a thousand dollars. Don't worry about. Okay. And I, I think a thousand dollars or more that you cash, they want to take down some uh, particulars, your social security, etc. That let you lay down, right? If you collect, not if you win. Oh, if you collect, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you got to collect. It's not if you bet it. If you collect it. If you collect it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Again, don't quote me on that. Check with your attorney because I am not one. All right, all right. So, um, what do you think that the what do, what do you got other than the Cardinals? In right. Football futures. What do you What do you think is a good good bet? Well, you know what? It's it's early yet, but that one just jumped out. And speaking to my guy Chris, and you know Chris pretty good. He's really does well with his futures in the NFL, and that one stuck out. I really haven't done much much research uh, outside of that play, but next week I'll have some for you. All right. Fair sure. enough. Fair enough. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, we're gonna talk a little bit more uh, sports gambling and fantasy, and we'll we'll have Nate chime in. But we'll we're gonna take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Ah, it's great to be back, Dan. Always good to be in that Big Apple here. And, you know, we love our sponsors, so that's, that's good, too. Uh, we, we left off. We were talking a little bit about football futures. Let's talk about uh, football now with the futures of Terrell Owens in the Hall of Fame. He not is- going. He's not going to go pick up that jacket, you know. Shame on him. Shame on him. Really? It's an honor just to get there, whether he got in on the first, uh, you know, first year, second year. He's snubbing the guys that voted him in, so I say shame on you, T.O. Nine seasons of 1,000 yards or more. Correct. Um, stellar, stellar career. Penalized for being a jackass. That'll do it. That, that'll do it. That, is that fair? I mean, he's a, he, his, statistically, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer without question. Well, what you do off the field does matter. You know, let's talk about Pete Rose, what he did off the field. Well, actually, he did it on the field, too, but... Your actions off the field will factor in. These writers, actually, there's a friend of mine. I have a friend of mine, uh, Tommy Fallon. Tommy from, Fallon? Yeah, he votes for the Heisman guys as well, you know. And uh, we talked about uh, T.O., and he said he wouldn't, he wouldn't vote him in uh, to the NFL this year. And Gary Myers um, said that he wouldn't vote for him if he had known that he was going to snub them. How many uh, people... Vote on the, the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Well, 7,500 and 26557. <laughs> I think there's seven. <laughs> no, you don't have no clue. I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Dan, God, well, you're not it. one of them then, Matt, huh? Yeah, I, am, I haven't been asked yet. But I think there's 700 that, uh, that vote for the, uh, the Heisman guys and stuff like that. I'm not sure. I think there's, there's, a, there's a good number of people that vote for it. Does Nate, does Nate vote for the Heisman guys or, or the Pro Football candidates? Nate, are you one of those uh, guys that get a vote? <laughs> Not officially. I can't confirm or deny that I might have hacked it. Nate, hey, let's put you on the spot right now. How many, uh, how many people vote for the Hall of Fame, Canton? Uh, I'm going to say three. And uh, if they get a tie, they're going to play rocks, paper, scissors. <laughs> All right. Okay. You know what? Say it with conviction and somebody out there is going to believe you, right? I don't believe that. I think there's 48. There you go. There's 48. Thank you, Greg, downstairs in the booth. Appreciate that. Thank you, Greg. God bless you. Somebody has to know what the hell they're talking about today. All right, so I'm going to take the other side of this. I'm going to say that comparing Pete Rose, who was betting on baseball and had players allegedly running bets for him out of the bullpen, right, is different. Oh, there is a difference. And being a jackass on the field and inventing ways to celebrate a score or something. Well, how many years has he been eligible? Let's look back. Two years he's missed. 
he wasn't he was snubbed two years. Well, okay, you know. big deal. Big deal. Get over it. Get over it. Jerry Rice got in his first year, but there was no off the field conflict with the man, right? He's probably the second best compared to Jerry Rice in my mind. There's been some greats, but you can't take nothing away from what he did on the field. It's what he did off the field in the locker room, the chaos that he caused. So I guess these guys factor that in. All right. You know what? I'm just uh I'm thinking you got. So you say leave it alone. Whatever happens off the field doesn't matter. Doesn't he, doesn't it, tarnish your career. I, I, you know, being a jackass is one thing. Being a murderer, breaking breaking laws. He didn't do any of that. I guess he wasn't liked by the writers, and that's what it comes down to. They get the vote, and they didn't think he was deserved of it his first couple of years. Right. And when they do, then he says, no, I ain't going. Like the baby he is. You know what? I got a chance to meet him and uh, Ocho Cinco in 2010 when Ocho Cinco was doing Dancing with the Stars out in Hollywood. Uh, Terrell, not drinking. Everybody else is drinking. This guy was eating lima beans, I yeah. think, at the bar. Yeah. yeah. Well, at the restaurant, rather. Yeah. I don't know anything about lima beans at a bar, but um, yeah, lima beans. Let's run with it. <laughs> Alleged. Allegedly, allegedly, he was eating. No, but lima actually, beans. his diet they say was impeccable, and he doesn't touch anything. He's in great shape, and everybody else there was having a good time, but him. All right. Speaking of impeccable diets, here's an amazing segue for the Amazons and Dom Smith. Coming up for the New York Mets out of nowhere, and Adrian Gonzalez being cut from the New York Mets. And I only wish that we had Ventra here to analyze this from a fantasy standpoint. But Dom Smith, then come on. Well, I don't know nothing about him. I I like Adrian. I mean, you know, they should have got him years ago. He's what thirty seven, thirty eight, something like that. He's seven four. His six, best five, years, five, his best years are behind him. But who else do they got? I mean. Why, why dump them? I don't know. Where, where are the Mets are going to wind up getting rid of Syndergaard. They're going to wind up getting rid of uh, DeGrom. They're going to strip that team down, Matt. And it's a shame. Starting off 11-1, and one, we watched the first game right here at Rock and Riley's. That's right. Opening day. Right out front. What's his face? Jay Bruce hit his first and last home run, <laughs> I think, on opening day. his last hit. But he has three home runs, right? Yeah. He had a grand slam that day, and he's had two, two cents. And five hits. Oh, horrible. He'll swing at anything. He's no Todd Frazier. You know, he swings at anything. I don't know. He must see bugs coming at him because he's just yeah. throwing that bat around like, ow, ow, ow. Yeah, they're, they're, the, uh, Bruce, if Bruce and Todd Frazier had a son, it would be Dave They love Todd Frazier, though. They, you hear the praise? They, they love Todd Frazier. Ooh, who's that? A-Rod was giving him pl uh, pr uh, plenty of props. Excuse my French. He's hitting 220. I don't like him. I never said I did. I'm saying Look they like him. Because he's a jerk. Todd Frazier. <laughs> Because I've been stuck in the studio all day, hey, Maddie, and on a bus, not for nothing. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I wasn't a, a fan of him, them getting Frazier. Gonzalez, I didn't mind Gonzalez. You know, I always liked him when he was with Boston, the Dodgers. Where did he start off? With Texas? Texas, and then... Um, Dodgers and Boston? or Nope, then from, from Texas, it was the big trade for uh, the second baseman, the power-hitting second baseman, Dominican guy. Nate, Nate, want to help us out there? Uh, did he... uh, Soriano. Wait, was it Soriano. 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 Remember Soriano, the, the Yankee second baseman that was real skinny with a huge bat and hit 55 home runs or whatever, you know, and you're like, how the hell is that guy even swinging the bat? Soriano, absolutely. He was, yeah. They loved him back in the early 2000s, right? He was yeah. their guy. Yeah. You know, then Cano came around and pushed him out of the way. Oh, well, they traded, they traded Soriano for, for A-Rod. Was that, that what was, happened? That was, he was, that was, and money. So, and then, wow, it seems and like then he got traded to Washington. Soriano did. Yes, yeah, so yeah. I went to Washington, and then the Cubs made one of the biggest mistakes with a contract ever, signing him. Yes, yes, because he stopped doing PEDs once he got the big contract, allegedly. I love allegedly. that word, allegedly, Matt. You've got to throw that in there to cover your ass, don't allegedly, you? Yeah. Allegedly. Yeah, and... and so, um, allegedly, Nate, who's going to win all of this? Your Cubs? I mean, I still like Houston's... Um, I know repeating is really hard, but it's hard to go against pitching right now, so until you start seeing some holes in that armor that Houston has with pitching... You've got to look to them as the favorites. And then um, some of the other favorites are also in the AL, though. So that kind of opens it wide up to the NL, since only one person can make it from the AL. And well, you got Braves, Cubs, uh, Nationals, Dodgers, Diamondbacks. I still like the Yankees to take the East. Uh, if you remember our first show with Greg, uh, I basically said Boston was not going to be competitive. Boy, was I wrong. Yeah. But anyway, Nate, getting back to run lines, uh, you've been very yeah. effective with run lines. What do you look for in a run line versus the money line? Now, I had taught you, rule of thumb, don't lay more than 140 at home, 130 on the road. 
So now that you're getting a little season, what do you look for when you release a run line? Uh, it's basically my way of when you're packing to go on vacation and you've got a suitcase and you got that one shiny thing that you really want to bring on vacation, but it's a minus 140 on the road. And so you flip it to a run line and then you can pack everything you want in the suitcase because it fits within, you know, the rules there. And boy, do they come back to bite you if you don't do that. I know you you're know, not big like, on a home team laying the runs, though. I try to grab the road team when I can because, you know, they're going to be guaranteed nine innings of at bats. And you don't if the home team's winning, maybe they go. Everybody plays to win. So you don't want to have all your money laid out, laid out for that team to then just win by one. I like to hedge my run line bets when at all possible with enough money on the money line so that it's at least a wash for me and I split out if I hit on the money line. And that way I can make more of a profit than I would have, but not expose myself to losing when the team's objective is to win and not to win by two. Well, as we know, there's a lot of one-run games in baseball, of course. And me personally, when I, score. when I play the run lines, I like to get back a plus, a plus 110, a plus 120. I don't like the lay Sometimes runs. They flip a lot. Sometimes they flip a lot too, um, because the Phillies I think went from being a minus one forty seven to a plus one fifty. I mean, that's almost three hundred points that you're grabbing there just by giving up that one run. Well, that's the thing. You got to know when to to buy in and, and when to wait in baseball. Like anything else, you got to know when the right time. When is value? Because sometimes you'll lose that value. Depend. These uh, odds change throughout the day dramatically. You can click out, click into a screen, and it just went up five, ten points. Or, and, and or for years, for years, you've been preaching that there's more value in baseball because you've you've been doing this so long. Well, that's just my passion is baseball. Other people can find value in anything. I love baseball. I know baseball. I sleep baseball. Uh, I'm not perfect in baseball, but I follow uh, guidelines. I don't do this. I don't abort. I don't go left. I stay on course. And what I mean by that is I don't lay more than 130 and 140 at home. Some people agree. Some people disagree. Some people will lay two, three to one. I don't do that. It doesn't work for me. It might work for you, which, hey, as long as it's working, that's great. Some people are willing to risk 1,000 to win 100. Not me. That's well, not my I style. I picked Cleveland in seven. <laughs> he sure so did. Well, so I'll tell you what. So it's you that I'm going to listen to when, when it comes down nah, to actually Donaghy, bucking Donaghy, actually, he switched over in the last show from five to four. Yeah. In the last show. I had him in six. I really thought we'd get at least five out of him, TV ratings, but I guess not. Uh, maybe they were out to prove a point because Donaghy's argument has been it's the TV. They want the TV. Maybe they're like, let's silence this guy. Let's put him out of their misery in four. Well, honestly, Golden State put him away in game one when JR did that, had that brain fart. <clears> that was it. They lost their sales right there. And as we saw, nothing uh, can help him after the fact. All right, Nate. Personally, I would prefer live betting because what I've noticed with live betting is once if you get through the first half inning and it's scoreless, the odds drastically, and by drastically, I mean like uh, maybe 10 to 30 points shift um, – against the team that just took their turn up. So if they have a good pitcher that you trust, grab them after they go one through three down and then just uh, hedge your bets from there. Well, let's face it. Live betting is not for everybody. You know much about live betting, Matt? It's I'm actually you're sitting there. I'm going to be sitting next to sitting you when I'm doing it. You're sitting there betting on basically every play. And you can't share that information with others because by the time they get the information, it's useless. Right. I mean, but Nate, I watched him, and honestly, he was very effective in it. And this guy's going to come in handy. If we could act as a proxy service and bet for people, yeah. that would be ideal. I just don't know if that's going to happen, the uh, logistics with that. But that's the only way to really help people with live betting is to bet it for them. Right, Nate? Yeah, that's uh, unfortunately, that's the only option that we have now um, until you can like telepathically distribute information. Yeah, but if, this, if the waves get interfered with, they won't get the information in time anyway, so we got to... Oh, yeah, no, tinfoil hats get in the way all the time. Nate, <laughs> Nate, no offense, but looking at you, I would think that you could telepathically transport just about anything. <laughs> I think you could actually concentrate and move us out of our chairs right now. <laughs> deep thought, uh, deep can, thought. Listen, I can only set things on fire with my mind. I can't do anything. All right, guys, we got another. take another quick break. We're getting barked at by our producer downstairs. So we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen, with more Gotcha Covered Sports. After this. Been blind since I was four. And I've never seen a beer commercial or a beer label. None of that stuff influences me. I drink beer because of the taste. 
and my beer is Pabst Blue Ribbon. It has the taste and the flavor. What do you think is on the label? I think there's a, a naked woman riding on a unicorn, jumping over fire. That's good beer. Danny and Nate, we are back, and we are going to talk a little fantasy sports because our fantasy sports guy is M.I.A. He's rounding third base as we speak right now. Yeah, but you know what? When one door closes, another one opens, and Big Ben Whitney on MeetTheMats.com proposed that the Mets and Yankees make perfect trade partners. Let's hear this, because this is quite interesting. Off camera, we talked about it, but break that thing down, please. Well, I tore him a new <laughs> in my response to his column, uh, despite the fact that he's one of my colleagues. But um, he's basically saying, well, the Mets have this have decent pitching and absolutely no hitting, and uh, they're going nowhere. You, you shut down the champions in a Subway series with, you know, like two runs and in 18 innings or whatever it was, blah, 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 blah. He says... It's time for the Mets to make a move. And he wants to he wants to Grom and Syndergaard on the Yankees. He's saying nobody no, nobody like Glaber Torres. Thank you for the correction, Greg Sussman, our producer downstairs, because I, I don't know. I've never who would name their kid Glaber? Not anyway, me. That's just, but I, that doesn't mean I wouldn't love him in a Mets uniform. I'd call him Glaber. <laughs> Glaber, Clapper. He's, or, you know. he's a hell of a ball player, regardless of what you call him. Yeah. He is, but so he said, no, he's off limits. We'll give you, we'll give you Clint Frazier and a, and a bag of other. Really we already got prospects. one Frazier from them. Yeah, we, we don't need no more Frasers. We, you can keep your Frazier. Because if he came over, we'd be, give us Sanchez at least out of Matt this. Get and be and suck, so he'd be sent down, and we'd say, down goes Frazier, down goes Frazier. Let me. Oh. If that was to happen, what could we get back that would make sense for the Mets, Matt? Being a longtime Mets fan, I would want. Uh, for for me, are those two for me to make that trade. Are those two arms, yes. Okay, I'll, I'll just uh, two players for two players. I'll trade you. I'll trade you Syndergaard and Degrom, or Judge and Stanton. Yeah. Okay. How about them apples? Yeah. Go back and dream right. again. Okay. All right. You know what? I'll back off the pedal a little bit. I'll take because uh, this is as absurd. As I want to keep Degrom. They can get rid of Syndergaard. I'll keep Degrom. Get rid of Syndergaard in exchange for Sanchez. I don't want Sanchez. Sanchez is fifty-five years old and. Probably. Gary Sanchez? He's probably 55. I yeah. thought he was a young buck. Let's look. Come on. How you doing? Nate, how old is Sanchez? You're passport, out there. You probably got his date of oh, birth. Yeah, yeah. 25. He's still young? He's 25 like El And he's, he's, okay. His defensive skills have gotten better this year, right? I, I, I said gotten. That's not a word because they keep correcting me on my grammar here, so excuse me. We could put him at first base with the Mets. He can't catch in the National League, that's for sure. Because you got, you know, you got one less batting spot and you don't have a DH. Um, but he's like he's, he catches with a pizza box behind the plate. Basically, that's his glove is no good. I think his defensive skills gotten better this year a little bit. Okay, but he's from the El Duque school as as far as I'm concerned of passports. You think El Duque was 38? <laughs> who's the 39? Who's that baseball kid? Danny, somebody that was Danny Almonte. Uh, what was this? He's playing for your team now. Yeah, he plays against us. So does he? Yeah. He's still in the league. He's 72 years old right now. Right. He was <laughs> he was 33 playing in the Little League World Series. <laughs> He did go to the World Series. Did he play against Todd Frazier? Yeah, they had to they had to change. They had to rescind their wins. All right, but yet we digress. Let's get our let's weigh in on this. What's the uh, odds, Nate? What, what do you think? The, is it complete fantasy to think that the Mets and yes. Yankees could make a trade of this stature? I, I think for those prospects, let's let's be real. All right, you got Glaber Torres plus uh, several other prospects in exchange for three months of Chapman, and now you want to go and say that you can demand two aces from the uh, other side of the city and not give up a stud in return. I mean, let's be real. Your outfield prospects are a dime a dozen. Yeah, Clint Frazier is panning out a little bit in the majors right now, but at least give up Miguel and Duhar if you're going to be going for something like that. That's a stud third baseman. That's a premium position. That's, you know, you can't just cut and paste guys into it. And you're Wait a minute. Getting- we got David Wright. <laughs> we do. That's right. Yeah, David Wright. He hasn't, sorry, I wasn't aware that it, he hasn't had an at bat in like three seasons. When's his last uh, at bat? He's coming back, man. When? He's coming I was back. In high school, the last time he was relevant, man. You know what I was thinking, and, and sorry to stop and change the topic here. A Rod's what seven home runs shy of. Oh, I like where you're going. Six hundred, seven hundred. I like where you're going. Why don't they bring him back? 
I, did you? Is he allowed to by contract? Can he come out, Nate? Does anybody know the he particulars? He can come back. But yeah. will the Yankees take America. him? Will he go to the Yankees to? He has seven more home runs, right? What is he at? Six ninety three, six ninety two. Bring him to bring him to City Field. If he comes back. If he comes back, he's technically still property to the Yankees since he retired before he lived up his whole contract, lived out the life of his contract. So I think they would have first dibs at him. Okay, well, I there got you two go. Words. I got two words for you. Ain't player manager. The New York Mets. Oh, A-Rod? A-Rod. A-Rod. <laughs> now we're really and reaching, Tebow. huh? And, and Tim Tebow. And Tim and Tebow. Tim Tebow. Well, we'll probably see him in uh, September oh. when they bring him up, right? Good when Lord. they extend the roster. Good Lord. Anyway. Well, what, what do we got out there? Everybody's been hurt. The story of our life. you know, and, the, and also the story of our life, getting back to these trades with the Yankees. The Yankees are the kings at making up great making players into great prospects, untouchable prospects. When the Yankees say a guy's untouchable, you know they are going to trade him for gold. You know, they're going to get something great. They're going to get a great veteran or something. Remember Ruben Rivera? He I was do. the next coming of Jesus Christ. I remember Ruben Sierra, too, if you want to go back to Rubens. If we're talking Rubens. They got him later I on. I don't really you know. like a Ruben sandwich no more, but Ruben. I like me a Ruben. All right. Ruben okay. Sierra was and, a good ball and, player. Uh, speaking of sandwiches, uh, we, uh, yeah, never mind. Uh, <laughs> Nate. Yeah. So you're saying that this is a, this is from your from your generation's point of view, this is not going to happen. Well, I don't see why on earth you'd give up on two prospects that are pitch. I mean, two stud pitchers in their mid twenties. If you're not getting a haul, these guys still have um, team control on their contracts. They're not making exorbitant amounts of money. And one of them alone, you would never package it together. You sell each one to a different team, and you're going to be getting a much greater haul in return. You know, supply and demand. You take one of them off the market, and then everybody else is going to be fighting for the other one that much more. But Dan, Dan, the ace in the hole for Yankees acquiring these aces is Ace Alderson, a.k.a. Sandy Your Alderson. Boy. Right? You, lo you love yeah, Sandy. I love Sandy Alderson. I love him. I just love him. Because, okay, let's go back to last year. What did he get for Jay Bruce, who was having a Jay very Bruce. good... Did he again? get Jay Bruce back for Jay, Jay Bruce? Bruce for Jay Bruce. He got Jay Bruce for Jay Bruce. Right. And just paying some more money for him. But a guy that was having a good... I think that's good... happened six times. What's that? I think, guys have been tra I think it's happened six times, I want to say, that a guy's been traded for himself. Interesting. We'll get into that in the next episode. But in this one, we got Jay Bruce, who was a commodity at that point, Goes to Cleveland, becomes an integral part of the Cleveland's off right. of Cleveland's offense as they make that run. They lose to the Yankees eventually, but they got a thirty round pick or something crazy, nothing, garbage. What do you think he's going to get from the Yankees? He's going to get zilch as long as they pay some money. I think this guy's playing to lose, not for nothing. I think so too. There's a conspiracy. It just doesn't make sense his decision making. Why he's still there because of that Ponzi scheme years ago yeah. or whatever. He's still there. He was assigned by Bud Sealing in Major League Baseball. What keep eyes on the Mets to cut the budget or make the budget nice? So nice. Make make us Mets fans miserable yeah. or more than we have to be. We're yeah. looking at 32 years come October. Yeah, 32 years. That's a long time. It took us from 69 to 86. That was 17 years. Yeah. Well, now we're we, had the, 30, we had a couple so. of flirts with it in 2015, so, well, we had 2000. 73. Right. Well, no, 86. But, you know, but 2000 and 2015. Right. The Cardinals, recent right? Ones. We were game seven against the Cardinals, uh, right? Carlos Beltran taking Beltran. Two, two pitches, curveballs from. What did he go down? Was it, a, was it a curveball? Two curveballs on th bases loaded. And they, they were like hittable balls, too. They were like right there in his wheelhouse. Uh, young Adam Wainwright had a tremendous curveball, and he was a relief pitcher at that time. You had Yadier Molina behind the plate. I was at this game in stunned silence in a blue suit. Uh, Cliff Floyd, the inning before, almost pinch hit a home run. Right. Like Warning a track, right? No, he hit it foul. How did he try? hit it just I foul, thought he upper deck just foul, and it was like Kirk Gibson, the second level. Up, you know, second level, just foul, Kirk, uh, Kirk Gibson-esque because he was on a, he was wounded, he hadn't played, he was injured, and it was like, he did it, and he didn't do it. I was in California when Gibson hit that home run. Crazy. Yeah, I watched that. It seemed like and everything seems like yesterday. around the bases. Like everything seems like yesterday. Stay with us. And All Danny, right. don't go anywhere. I know you're not going anywhere, but we got to. Not till my bus leaves at 7. We got to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with more Gotcha Covered Sports. Hey, rugby fans, rugby is everywhere. The giant is awakening, and Rugby Wrap-Up is there with the alarm clock. Rugby Wrap-Up, global rugby coverage, sometimes with a wink. 
Weekly studio shows, daily website content, breaking news, evolving stories, the biggest names in the game on camera, all over social media. Pundits from all corners of the planet, local, global, professional, amateur, female, and male. Find it all on RugbyWrapUp.com. And just like that, we're back, Daddy B and Nate, guys. Uh, Major League Baseball, the rest of the season. Well, everything's falling into play, as I predicted, except for the National League West. I had the Dodgers, but they're, they're getting there. It's very competitive. The Giants are in it. Cleveland in the Central in the America League. Houston, see, that's a good race right now, but I think Houston will take uh, Seattle. Cubbies, of course, they're fighting Milwaukee. So I had everything down pat except for the National League West, but it's still time. So everything I predicted in uh, March is falling into play. So I'm pretty happy at this point. That Milwaukee bullpen has been tremendous. Right. They have been. Nate, is there, what, what kind of value you got in that bullpen out in Milwaukee, Nate? Well, I mean, it's really hard to tag an exact value to a bullpen uh, because so much of it is interpreted based on uh, the manager's decision making and how it's used. So the bullpen value is very much uh, more of a composite between the manager's decision making ability and then the bullpen's actual ability to execute with their talent. And they're kind of the perfect blend out there right now. Maybe some trade bait for Milwaukee. You know, fill some gaps. And you know, other teams need pitching. Everybody needs pitching all the time. I think it's too early at this point. They're right there. Even the Cardinals. It's going to be a three-way race. Pittsburgh will falter. I think I talked about this last week. But right now, it's a three-way race. Actually, four Pittsburghs in it, but I think they fall apart. And Cubs and Cardinals will wind up one and two in that order. Cubs and Cardinals. Milwaukee will falter, but they'll stay competitive till like August. All right, that's interesting. Uh, Nate, what do you think? Cubs, Cardinals, and Milwaukee, or what's the what's the I mean, order there? I'm right in line there with Danny. I've looked ahead at these teams' schedules, and um, M- Milwaukee is just not good against teams that are above 500. Right. They're 12 and 14, I think, right now, and some of the teams that they beat when they're above 500 those teams wind up proving that they really aren't 500 caliber teams once they get a little bit further on into the season. So, I mean, it's bullpen trading bullpen arms for legitimate prospects would be a nice way to stop stock the farm for them. But I feel like that would just be throwing the white flag up before there's real cause to for the fan base. And that's, I mean, that's, that would be upsetting as a fan to see your team just casting off their best assets right now, all in a preemptive way of trying to strike before they start to, you know, not do well. Yeah, it is June. Yeah, but before you know, we'll be at the All Star break. You know, when is it? The twelfth, July twelfth, or something. I like think that? so. Um, I got usually check. the tenth. I think it's the seven five six five seven 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 six seven seven somewhere along. You know, I'm saying this is going to be 2015 redo for the New York Mets. Oh, really? Yeah. Now? Oh, yeah. David oh. Wright's coming back. This guy, Wilmer. Wilmer is going to cry on the field, but yeah, then Fred come Flintstone back. will be playing third base. Bonnie in center. Yeah, keep going. Dino in right. Oh, it's going to be great. Hoppy, hop, hop, hop. Catching. Yeah. Oh, now they're all it's smoking great. weed now, the Mets, huh? Weed. So Keith it's Hernandez good. is coming back, huh? Ron Dolan, Gooden. Boom. Boom, the whole team. Bring back Scrub. <laughs> as the player manager. <laughs> keep dreaming. I mean, that's, that's a Mets fan for you. We're always open for uh, suggestions, I guess, or ideas. All right, guys. I got two questions I got to ask you. One, who's the next major league star to get thrown out for drugs? And who's what type the- of drugs, Matty? EEDs. Okay. I'll turn that over to Nate. Who do you surmise is using the sauce? And again, we have no basis for this. Oh, this is all uh, oh, speculation. What's that word you call? Allegedly. allegedly. Alle- this allegedly. is alleged who speculation. Is allegedly. allegedly. All right. So who do you think allegedly is shooting up uh, testosterone and sustenon and uh, anadrol and everything else? Alleged. Allegedly. Allegedly. Well, Allegedly, if you want to go looking up and down, uh, right now, um, one guy, uh, Gene Segura, over uh, shortstop for the Mariners. He found one. He's, <laughs> yeah, no, he's, he's oh, all he was also it. Robbie Cano's double play partner. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, yeah, well, <laughs> so the big thing that we're going to look at here, though, is uh, guys don't always suspect the guys that don't have huge power numbers, but look back at D. Gordon, and when D. Gordon all of a sudden became a contact machine, uh, well, he'd always been making contact, but his hits started getting a little bit more juice on them, and they started falling more frequently. But when you go back and you look at um, Segura's stats throughout the year, I mean, he was he was playing on Seattle last year. He was a 300 guy then. Um, he was a uh, 319 um, for that one year in Arizona. But up until then, he was only like a 200-ish hitter. And 
I don't know. I mean, it, part of it could be something fishy. So you think he was but, shooting up Robbie in the butt, vice versa? Hmm. That's all legend, I mean, legend, Bob. I said you think. I didn't say he did. I used the keyword right. think. Right. I covered well, my basis. It, Good. In 142 games with Milwaukee in 2015, he had 144 hits with only 16 doubles and six home runs and five triples. The next year, he had 41. Um, his hits total jumped by 60, so it jumped. His hit total jumped by about 40 percent, but his doubles total almost tripled, and he winds up hitting with almost triple. Next home question. Run. We're that's out of time on that question. Bell on that right. one, Nate. Good answer. Good answer. But we had to cut you. Oh my, we had to cut you short on that one. Uh, to get okay. to the to the next question, that's a good answer, by the Opiates way. Opiates for five hundred, please. <laughs> and where there's uh, where there's blood, there's syringes. If you know what I mean, smoke and fire. I did. Blood. I don't know nothing about yeah. that stuff. Oh, I don't either. I don't. I don't know. We don't again. Bag. Oh, actually, I do. If you want to get back in the eighties, we all dabbled <laughs> in it. You want to get technical? Yeah. No, we don't. No, we. I don't. shot a little no. testosterone back in the day. So what? So what? So what of it? You hear that? No. That's the police knocking at the door. Okay. It was We're legal. Just, I had a prescription. Yeah, Everyone's having around. fun, folks. Just spitballing here. All right, who's the first major league manager to get fired this year? Oh, boy. Mickey? Oh, Mickey, what a pity. You're, You're so good. <laughs> that they was Ricky. No, it's Mickey. It's He's Mickey gone. Oh, Mickey, what a pity. You got to get the hell out of New York. Or the Mickey Mouse organization. Uh, just, you know what? 11 and 1, and look at us now. Nate, who's, your, who's the first manager to get fired? You agree with us? Um, generally, managers get more than one year, even in a market as volatile as New York. But, I mean, if you want to talk about what's justifiable, I feel like probably you'd either want to go with the manager in Baltimore or Kansas City for the AL. And then looking at the NL, maybe just hitting a reset button with the Reds or the Pirates. Um, I mean, the Pirates have been good. Glenn Hurdle? You don't like Hurdle? I, no, he's Hurdle, a good baseball Hurdle. man. I like Hurdle. How about you, Matty? He was, he, uh, he was also he, a number one pick for the New York Mets. He was going to be the next three, three, uh, five-tool player. Well, they talked about him being a manager for the Mets at one point. Yeah, I, I don't mind Clint Hurdle. He's he's managed garbage for a long time. But Nate, I got to disagree with you in Kansas City. I, I I don't think I think that's more on the the franchise not retaining players and having guys bolt when they were they were so competitive. It is, you know. Well, I'm not I'm not saying that the, the managers. I'm not saying that the managers deserve to go. I'm just saying from the structure because generally the front office fires the managers, the sacrificial lamb or the scapegoat to take the heat off of them, not knowing how to do their job. So I'm more looking at clearly the Orioles have no idea what they're doing, and Kansas City from 2015 when in the uh, you know you win the World Series and then all of a sudden you just I mean they're off a cliff now they're barely over 300 winning percentage. Yeah, it's uh, a big drop. Yeah, but I agree with him. I agree with the kid on Buck Showalter, and I, I've talked about this before. I don't know how this guy maintains his job. You're Garbage. not a fan then. Not not in New York. Not anywhere. No, no. and you know you didn't yeah. like him in Seinfeld. Remember when he took? Remember when the Diamondbacks started? He was there. He was assigned to them and took took over the team, and he was able to dictate everything. He he's one of those guys that said no jewelry and no facial hair. I don't get that. What difference does it make? You know, what teams back Cincinnati in the seventies they weren't allowed facial hair. They had to have March shots, right? Was yeah. that her name? Black yeah, March shots. The, the plain black uh, with shots. The, yeah. the, 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 the she Saint ran Bernard. that team with an iron fist. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Yankees weren't allowed facial hair for all those years. Are yeah. they allowed hair now? The Yankees. They weren't allowed. They were allowed mustaches. mustaches? They were not allowed beards. Okay. Or, you know. Well, the first team to really strut them were the A's. Remember the swinging A's? Sure. Finley sure. days. Dick Tidrow. Oh, my. No, where they had fingers with yeah. the mustache. Raleigh, uh, uh, Raleigh Dick Rudy. Tidrow out of the bullpen, right? Dave Duncan didn't have yep. hair, but what a team they had. You Gene know? Tennis. Yeah, Sal Bando. Camp, Campy. Campanar. Joe Rudy. North. Billy North. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We George, uh, Gene Washington. Reginald was, Martinez Jackson. <laughs> Number nine. Number nine. Where did he come up with, though? What team? Uh, uh, well, I know who passed on him when picked Steve Chilcott. It was the Chilcott Kansas City Athletics. Catcher. Wasn't it Kansas City Athletics I before believe, the Royals? I believe it was. But do you know who had, who picked Steve Chilcott? Anybody know who you Steve know who Chilcott is? You know who picked Steve Baum? Steve Chilcott, Dan. I'm glad you asked. Was the <laughs> pick that the Mets chose over Reginald Martinez Jackson. He was oh, a catcher I thought that maybe it was George Theodore. The stork? The stork. George, remember when he came to the Mets, and we're going back now in the 70s, the only thing he wanted was a new pair of uh, cleats. <laughs> That's all he wanted. All right, I'm going to have to hit the bell on the two of us because Tom we're McCann? putting a younger audience to sleep with our banter about the New York Mets days gone it's, by. That's why it's our show. We can it talk is. what we show. want and edit Screw what you. we want. <laughs> Screw, Screw you, you Kenny. I'm going home. All right, Nate, are you oh still awake God. over there? Um, hey, I love, I love this history 
It's great. Well, you are a history book. I mean, when he walked into my uh, my studio and saw all the memorabilia, he told me what Ernie Banks hit back in this, and this guy hit that, and Jimmy Fox, Double X. Boom. Yeah, I all love right. them. So. Guys, uh, I believe we're out of time. Do you have any right last here. comments? Yeah, I mean, let's go, and congratulations to New Jersey Murphy. Good job. I thought you would take your time to sign that bill, but way to go to work. Let's make some money here, Mammoth. I love it. Mammoth. Mammoth. Ma boom. Mammoth. Boom. He got it. Mammoth. He na nailed it. Well, what Mammoth Mammoth? That mammoth. people know it. The racetrack in New Jersey. Boom. That's okay. How about go to the racetrack and bet on the over five and a half wins for the Arizona Cardinals. I assume, or allegedly, they're going to win eight games. I like that. Eight and eight. They did eight and eight last year. Maybe nine and seven this year. I agree with you. Five and a half games? Come on. They got some good depth at quarterback. If Bradford could at least get eight games under the belt, their schedule is pretty favorable the first four games. They might go three and one the first four games, so that's half of your wins right out the shoot. Solid coaching there, too. I like that. Yeah. I like yeah, that pick. Absolutely. Nice. nice. Um, Nate, final thoughts? I'll, I'll spare you guys a thinking and just leave you with a fun fact like I, let, I did last time. The uh, first hovercraft was invented in 1959. We got you covered on everything from fantasy to sports talk to gambling. And nonsense Anything. as well. And what? And nonsense as and well. And nonsense and banter. So yes. On that note, I want to thank Nate Rawlings. Nate, give us a wave. And Mr. Danny B at dbwins.com. And I'm Matt McCarthy at meetthematch.com and rugbywrapup.com. And we will catch you the next time on Gotcha Covered Sports.